here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited to have you here with me today to give you my advice that I would give my younger self. And on one side or the other, I will put a picture of me in younger years. And I think I was about 30 here. This was during my time as a reporter. I was actually in seeing a fashion show, I think then. And although I look like everything looks wonderful, I basically was putting myself down a lot inside. I was picking myself apart. I was having problems with eating disorder type things. I was wanting to eat everything in sight. So although I looked like everything was pretty much all together, I did have some issues going on and I really wish that I could take all of the wonderful things I've learned now, mostly through hard knocks because I'm 63 years old and life does kick us around. There is no doubt about that. But I would love to go back to my younger self and tell her first, it's really going to be okay. Don't worry so much. Don't make so many to-do lists. Just kind of calm down and enjoy the ride because ladies, I'm here to tell you, the ride is a short one. And basically, you know, as you're going through your 20s and 30s, you've got kids, you think you're gonna have those kids forever and that life will really never change. And then you look up and they're graduating from high school, they're graduating from college, they're getting married, and life has gone on. So in this video, I'm going to be very honest with you about the things I would tell my younger self if I could. But first, if you're not a subscriber and if you're interested in using all the things you learned in your first half to make your second half even better than your first, then I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate that because it would help it in the YouTube algorithm. Before I get into my list of 11 things I would tell my younger self, I would like to show you this shirt. It is Friday and I got an order in from ThreadUp yesterday and I'll put a link below the video to my ThreadUp $10 off code. If you're brand new to ThreadUp, you can get $10 credit there, which is just wonderful. But here is this little shirt and I'll show you on one side or the other the long picture of it because it's kind of unusual and that's kind of why I'm sharing it with you. It's kind of boho, it's kind of flippy and different and it is nothing that I would pay $75 for but I think it was $8 on ThreadUp and I thought it was really fun and I went to work this morning and one of the girls said she really liked it. She's another one who's a little boho just like me. So anyway, if you'd like some new items to spruce up your wardrobe, you might look below the video and get that $10 off credit to thread up and start shopping. Okay, let's get into this and I'll tell you the things I would tell my younger self. And the first is pretty obvious if you followed my channel, it is to wear sunblock every single day. And I did not know that in my 20s and 30s. I think it was 35 before I started wearing sunblock every single day. But this is the single best thing you young women can do out there. And even if you're older, it is never too late to start. Please wear sunblock every single day and wear it on your face. And if you're going to be outside, wear it on your arms and or your legs because there is always self tanner. Wearing sunblock every single day is a great way to stop the brown spots from appearing on your face in the future or at least to really slow them down. And it also really does help with fine lines and wrinkles. Basically the sun destroys our collagen and that is one of the reasons I think my skin is pretty good at 63 is that I have used sunblock very religiously and I hope you will too. Okay, my second piece of advice to my younger self involves sun protection too. And this is basically sun protection all over your body. And this is the tip, use SPF clothing items. And this is not exactly clothing, it is a visor, but I'll link this below. It's one of my favorites. I got it on Amazon. I think it's maybe $12 and you just wear it out in the sun and it really gives you a lot of sun protection. Also, you can use a wide brim hat as well, but I think that looks pretty formal. And the main place that I started using this was at my kids' soccer games because every weekend we would go out and sit in the sun for two and three hours at a time, sometimes both Saturday and Sunday and sometimes even Friday evening. And even on cloudy days, that sun is coming through and it is very important to protect your skin. So just get in the habit of wearing a good sun visor. And here is something that I just added recently and that is sunglasses. Now sunglasses look cool because they just kind of give you that movie star vibe, which I really, really like, but also they totally protect your eye area. And I have a lot of what I call Marlboro Man wrinkles. 
although I do use a little Botox there, which does soften them. But for the longest time, I didn't think I could wear sunglasses because they did make huge divots on my nose that I would wear for like the next 24 hours. It was not pretty. So I did not tend to wear sunglasses. However, I have since realized, and you may know this too, you can go into an eyewear store and they can push these little nose guards out wider so you don't tend to get the divots on your face. So if you're not wearing sunglasses, I hope you'll buy yourself a really fashionable pair. TJ Maxx is a great place to find them for about $10, and they really do protect your under eye area. Another thing that I have in my car at all times is an SPF umbrella, and this is great when you're running into Walmart on a really sunny day just to grab your SPF umbrella because it reflects the sun away from you. The inside of it is black, but the outside is silver, so it just reflects the sun's rays away from you. This is especially good at sporting events, that kind of thing, although you do tend to have to sit on the back row so you're not blocking people's views. Now, another sun item, sun protection item that I really love, and my white balance just went crazy there, but this is the Hanes Cool Dry T-shirt, and they have these in all different colors. And Cooley Bar, I think, also has some great ones with some wild patterns and that kind of thing. And I went with my girlfriends to Table Rock Lake a few weekends ago. And when I got in the water, I actually donned one of these shirts, although it was kind of a wild print one. It was kind of blue and it looked very tropical. So it worked well in the water. But even when you're in the water, it's important to think about sun protection for your skin. In fact, one girl on the boat said she even had Cooley Bar gloves, which she wore when she was swimming. Okay, another thing I would tell my 20 or 30 year old self is to start using Tretin Owen. And I use the 0.05% strength. My skin can't seem to tolerate the 0.1% strength, but the 0.5 tends to be working very well. And if I could talk to my 20 year old self, especially because my 20 year old self had acne. In fact, I had acne until I was almost 60 years old. Finally, at 60, my skin gave up on producing pimples, which was a really welcome thing. But anyway, if you're in your 20s or 30s, you could use retinol. And you know, you might try that if you're a little bit worried about starting something a little heavier duty, but they have not proven that retinol actually transforms itself into vitamin A in the skin. They have not really done studies yet of using a retinol-based cream versus using the real tretinoin. And the real tretinoin is good because it is already in the form of vitamin A and it's usable by your skin. And the retinol needs to be transformed another process or two to make it available for your skin. But the reason I would recommend this to my younger self is it would help with acne. There's no doubt about that and then it would help my collagen stay strong, stay healthy, and stay thick as I got older. Also, tretinoin is good to fight the sunspots, the aging spots on your skin, and it definitely does keep down the fine lines and wrinkles. I have used tretinoin now since I started my YouTube channel, maybe a year before I started since I was 58, so I've used it for four years now, and it really has helped improve my skin, but I can't imagine how great it would have been if I had started this in my 20s. Okay, my fourth tip is to never sleep in makeup. And if you're my age, ladies, I certainly hope you are no longer doing that because that is a bad habit. But I can remember that in my 20s and 30s, I would be out partying with people and maybe get home after having had one too many drinks and I would fall into bed and not really worry about going to sleep in makeup, wake up the next morning looking like a raccoon. But that could have been one of the reasons that I was getting the acne outbreaks that I got rather regularly because when you sleep in makeup, it just mixes with the sebum, that oil that your skin is pumping out, especially at that age. It does cause breakouts and it's just not really good for your skin. And another reason to make sure you take off your makeup at night is you really do need to start that skincare regimen that I talked about earlier because once you clean your skin and you put on all of your skincare preparations, even just two or three, something very simple is just fine, but your skin has that eight hours of sleep to drink in that skincare and really improve your skin. Okay, my next tip is to become a back sleeper. That's right, and this is the pillow that I use, and I absolutely love it. It is from Sleep and & Glow, and the thing I particularly like about this pillow is that it is kind of a cantilevered pillow. So if you have problems sleeping on your back, this is a great pillow for you. Basically, I just put it under my head, and I do sleep on my back, 
and I've done that for about the past four to five years and I think it really has cut down on my wrinkles and I can't imagine if you started to become a back sleeper in your 20s how great your skin would look over the coming decades of not pressing your skin into that pillow look how much that wrinkles and for those of you who have seen my videos about this before you know that the main reason I started to become a back sleeper was that I saw my father-in-law Don he had one wrinkle on his forehead that was actually a vertical wrinkle and for the longest time I thought how can you get a vertical wrinkle I mean you're not like doing this to yourself all the time and then I realized that oh he is sleeping on his left side and he is causing that vertical wrinkle and so that caused me to go ahead and learn to sleep on my back but the neat thing about this pillow, and I'll show you a diagram, basically you can sleep on your back like this and put your head here. But if you're a side sleeper, this pillow also works because you just put your head in the side, I'll show you. You just put it in there like this. And even though my weight is fully on my side and I can sleep here all night long, I have no wrinkles pressed into my face. Whereas if I were on a standard pillow, everything would be wrinkling. I would have the wrinkles around my eyes. I would have the wrinkles around my mouth, those nasal labial folds. But look how beautifully that works. And I'll put a link below the video with a discount code. I think you can get $10 off on this pillow. And I will tell you the Sleeping Glow Pillow people also sent me something that I absolutely love. And I don't plan to do a full video about this until the fall because it's summer right now. But this is a weighted blanket and I'll show it to you on one side or the other but it is an absolutely wonderful quality weighted blanket. I believe it weighs between 10 and 20 pounds and weighted blankets have become very popular lately because they are proven to be a stress reliever. They're proven to help you go to sleep more quickly and stay asleep, which is absolutely wonderful. And there are even studies linking it to a decrease in anxiety and a decrease in overall pain. And again, I'll make a video in the fall explaining a little bit more about it, but here it is in my bedroom right now. This is my bedroom, and I got that bedding from Pottery Barn not too long ago. Well, actually maybe a couple of years ago. Time really flies. But here is a look at the weighted blanket. And it comes in this wonderful little holder to keep it nice. And as you can see, it is a gorgeous comforter and really, really, really good quality cotton. I wish you could feel that. It is just wonderfully smooth. And it is very well stitched, very well made. I know I have it for a long time. You could put it in a duvet if you would like. I think that's the right word, basically a comforter bag if you didn't want to, to get it dirty. And actually this fall, when we start using it more, we will probably do that because I want to make absolutely sure that nothing happens to it because it is a fine quality comforter. But I wish you could feel this. It is super, super heavyweight. And when you are under it in the bed, it just feels so comforting. It's absolutely wonderful. And even forgetting about all the health-related studies, the thing that Al and I like about sleeping under a weighted blanket is how great it feels. Basically, you pull it up and that weight just gives you a real feeling of security, of calmness. It just feels like you're enveloped in comfort. It's absolutely wonderful. I will say though, that if you are pregnant, you should not use a weighted blanket. Or if it's a child that could not get it off in the middle of the night, it does have some weight to it. So do remember that. Okay, the sixth thing that I would tell my younger self is a beauty item, and it is to get your color analysis done and to follow it. And you know, it's so funny because back when I was in my 30s, I think I had a color analysis done, but I always wanted to be a winter because I love black, and that was not the color season that I was. Turns out I'm a spring. And I did not follow the color analysis, and I really wish I had. And recently, I had my color analysis done by Jill Wylott of Color Me Beautiful, and the results were fantastic. And these are some of my colors here. It has a little bit of black in it, but the rest and the more pinky colors, those are colors that I can wear very well. And looking back on my 30-year-old self, I sure wish that I had stayed with the results of that color analysis because I can't imagine the hundreds or even thousands of dollars I would have saved buying the colors that looked best on me through the years. And it's so funny because as I've gotten older and I've done the color analysis again, I absolutely love the spring colors because they really do help me bring on the glow. And looking back, I really wish I'd paid attention to that and used it. Okay, my seventh beauty tip to my younger self would be to learn your style. You know, I never really was very good with clothes. All through the years, I would buy things that maybe look good on the mannequin and I would get them home and somehow they just never really suited me. 
And that's because I didn't really realize that my body shape and all the angles of my body and even my hair played into the items that looked best on me. So over the years, I made many, many mistakes in things that I bought, again, probably spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars in buying clothes that turned out to sit in my closet that I didn't really use. Well, recently I have been learning a lot more about fashion and I'm having so much fun with it and I am really truly learning what looks good on me. And April Grow of Stunning Style Society gave me a free membership to her program and I've been absolutely loving it. And first, she has a free class that I have linked below and I hope all of you will take it because you learn so much just from the free masterclass is what it's called. And here it is, it's a free masterclass. It says five steps to find the right clothes for you. And again, it is totally free and I learned a ton from that. And then when you want to graduate further and learn what looks even better on you, then she has another course. And this one does cost a little bit of money. But again, I learned so much from this course that I know over time I will save hundreds or thousands of dollars in not buying clothes that I don't like and that don't really suit me. And this is called the Style Your Silhouette course. And basically it helps you learn how to dress the body you have and love it. And looking back to my younger self, I really wish that I'd taken some time, although, you know, with, with working and raising children, I didn't have a lot of time. And that's one thing that's really good about April's courses is that you don't have to go out on your own on the internet and try to figure out what body type you are and what would look good on you. Those courses are just very succinct ways to give you tools and tips and tricks to absolutely look your best and I hope that you will check out April Grow's offerings because they are truly wonderful. Okay, that is the end of my kind of beauty related tips I would give to my younger self. Now I'm into more of the woo woo tips I call them, but to me, these are even more important probably than all of the tips I gave you in terms of beauty, fashion, and style. These tips help you feel good in your own skin. And that is one thing I would say to my younger self, and that is first, appreciate your good looks because I don't care what you look like. If you're 20 or 30 years old, you have that young radiance about you and you really should just enjoy that. And if I could give my younger self any advice, it would be appreciate what you have and don't sweat the small stuff and just enjoy your youth and beauty. But I guess this is my eighth tip and this is a woo woo tip and that is to realize that thoughts are things. And I didn't realize this until very recently, but I have come to believe after much study that our thoughts and our words are actually things. It's like we're this radio station or this TV station. And when we say things or we think things, we're putting out waves out into the universe that other people can actually sense. Maybe they don't know it outwardly, but other people can sense these thought forms or thought wavelengths, but our thoughts and words are powerful. And so we really need to guard our thoughts and knowing the power of our thoughts and words, it's important to develop a habit of kind of cleaning up our thoughts and our words. Basically, when we're thinking a negative thought, try to replace it with a gratitude thought, try to lean into something more positive. When we're about to say something really negative to someone, stop and really think about it and perhaps change our language a little bit because our thoughts and words do create a reality and we want to make a reality as positive and good as possible. Now, my ninth tip is to be your own best friend. And what I mean by that is, it kind of relates to the last tip, but it's a little bit different in that all day long we talk to ourselves. And when I was younger, I would say, oh, you screwed that up. Oh, that was so stupid. Oh, you look terrible. Oh my God, those jeans look awful on you. You know, you've gained five pounds, you look terrible. And I would constantly say these very mean things to myself. And when I look back, not only was I not being my own best friend, I wouldn't put up with that crap from an enemy. I mean, somebody starts saying that stuff to me and I would have left the room. And unfortunately, although I wouldn't have taken that from someone else, I dished it out to myself and it did not make me a happier soul and that is for sure. And that is a good tip if you're younger or if you're in your 50s or your 60s like I am, just really kind of watch the self-talk that you have going on in your head and give yourself a break. Give yourself positive and uplifting self-talk that really helps you. Now, the 10th tip I would have for my younger self is to fall in love with yourself. And I know that sounds self-centered and kind of weird, but it is so true. And in the Bible it says, love your neighbor as yourself, but the most important thing is to love yourself first 
because if you don't love yourself, you have nothing to share with another person. And Louise Hay was fabulous at this and her whole career, now she's passed, which is really sad, but her whole career focused on affirmations, positive affirmations and positive self-talk. And she recommended, and oh my, this is a terribly dirty mirror. Sorry about that. But she recommended that every morning, either in your mirror, you know, your vanity mirror as you're getting ready, or in a little portable mirror here, that you tell yourself good things about yourself. And I do this. I do this every morning. I set the timer on my cell phone for five minutes and I talk to myself and I'll do it and try not to feel like an idiot. But I love you, Beth. I love you, Beth. You're beautiful. You're positive. You're going to have a beautiful day today because you deserve things to go really right for you. You're going to be kind to yourself. When you speak to yourself, you're going to be kind to others. You're going to try not to gossip about others because you know that you would not like someone to say that stuff about you. Try to be positive and uplifting to others. Be positive and uplifting to yourself. I love you, Beth. I love you, Beth. I really, really love you. And so that was a little bit embarrassing. But when I first started this, I could not look at myself in the mirror. And I certainly couldn't say, I love you, Beth. I could not say it because I would look at myself and go, oh, you know, you look terrible. You look old. You've got wrinkles. Again, I was not being my own best friend. And so it took a lot of time to make peace with myself in the mirror. It probably took me a week to get to that point. But now I do it every morning and it really does help. Now, tip number 11 is kind of a self-evident one, but it is do the right thing and that morality counts. And I really wish that I could have gone back to my younger self and taught her this. And, you know, it is a self-evident thing because no matter what your religion, and it really has nothing to do with religion, it has to do with basically what is right and wrong. And we all have a compass inside our own hearts that knows this. We know, looking at any given situation, usually what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do. And my general guideline would be, if you would not put it on Facebook, do not do it. And looking back over my life, you know, I tried to do things right, but there were times when maybe I did the wrong thing. And those things are harmful to us. And I'm talking about the big things, not the little things that you do wrong, because we all have little white lies we tell and things like that. But if there are any big things in your life and you have to make a decision between one course of action and another and one is the right thing to do and one is the wrong thing to do, ask yourself the question, would I want this to be on TV? Would I want 50 people around me to know this? And if it is not something that you would feel proud of others to know that you would want to keep a secret, those little secrets are not good, then don't do it. And the reason not to do it is, number one, usually whatever starts a thing ends a thing. So if you start out on a course that is a good course, then usually good things come from that. It's kind of like you've sown a seed of good and good things come. But if on the other hand, you kind of take the little other road maybe, and I don't mean that from a religious perspective, but if you do something that's wrong, you're starting out with bad energy, you're sowing bad seeds, and really only bad can come from that. And even above reaping what we sow, and this is something I did not know early in my life, is the fact that the things that you know about yourself, you carry with you forever. And if you've done something that you wouldn't be proud of, and it's one of the bigger things, even if no one else knows about it around you, the sad thing is that you carry it with you forever and it hurts your own heart. Inside our own conscience, inside our own self, we always carry the fact that we did that thing. So that is a good reason to always try to do the right thing. Now, that was my 11 tips, but I'm going to give you a bonus tip or two. And the first I would tell my younger self is banish perfectionism. Stop thinking that if your thighs were just an inch thinner or you're an inch taller or you did this or this or this, that life would be perfect. Because I'm here to tell you after 63 years of life, it is always nice to have goals. But if you think you're going to be happy when you reach that goal, you're not. Happiness is in the present moment, and that is yet another bonus tip. Just look around you and be grateful because you're never going to be happier than you are right now. Getting to that big goal is not necessarily going to make you happy. The way to be happy is to say, what around me is great right now and appreciate that. And yet another bonus tip, a second bonus tip is to forgive. Really, resentment only hurts you. And I say that looking back on my life from a point that I was fired from my parents' business after selling National Walmart and making them a lot of money. It's a long story, 
but I really think I was wrongly fired. I made a lot of money after making that big commission, and I don't think my father particularly was very comfortable with that amount of money I was making. So anyway, I got fired, and I held resentment in my heart to both of my parents for probably 15 years, and I ended up getting rheumatoid arthritis, and I really think it had something to do with that high level of resentment I had going on in my body. After the first two or three years of the firing, yes, the family got back together because we were estranged during that time, but in my heart of hearts, every time I saw them, I just went, uh, 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 and I felt that resentment, and it just did me no good. And so my tip to you about resentment, especially against other people, is that for our own sakes, it is so important for us to forgive. And the way I was finally able to do that is, I realized that my parents were doing the best that they could at the time they were in their life and that other people can't give you what they don't have. And both of my parents had very challenging childhoods. I mean, super challenging. Like my father spent part of his childhood in an orphanage. I mean, imagine that. And his mother put him there. So think of the resentment he could have held. But anyway, that is beside the point. But just realize that number one, you're doing the best you can at any given point in your life and so are others around you. Well, those were my tips that I would give to my younger self. And if you have tips you would like to share with your younger self or tips that you would like to share with all of us on how to live a better, happier life or even a more beautiful life, if it's a beauty tip, I hope you'll share those in the comment section below the video. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that little bell that just notifies you of my future videos and or give this video a thumbs up if you like, because it helps it do better in the YouTube algorithm. Okay, normally at this point in the video, I give you a little thought for the day, but I've given you a lot of thoughts for the day earlier in the video, so I won't do that now. But first, I love it that you're here with me and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.